Hey everybody, Larry Bailey here with another Tuesday community event. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, if you're watching this on replay, we meet every Tuesday in Mortgage.Community. Community. We meet at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Chris Lawrence says, let's go. I agree, Chris and Brian. Let's go, let's get it done. Today's all about eFolder. Um, for the month of May and the month of June, uh, I am expressing some ideas and sharing knowledge, which is, I think, always healthy, uh, on how to perform a self-health check. Uh, I think Encompass Health Checks have been around um, for, uh, for a long time. Yes, Amy, Chris always wants to be first. He just literally types it out, and then he hits, he's like, Chris, if I ever need to buy any Ticketmaster tickets, I'm coming to you, because I, I figured you got the, uh, you got the in. Um, anyway... Uh, we're going to talk about, so today's conversation is all about eFolder. Um, in case you didn't notice, eFolder is uh, on desktop. It's also available on the web. Now, you can't do everything on the web that you, uh, that you can on desktop just yet, but it's pre getting pretty damn close. Um, conditions, I think, are the next big release in uh, 24.2. By the way, it's coming out in 60 days-ish. So if you haven't if you haven't finished reading all the 24.1 release notes, um, you should probably finish up. You should probably take care of all that stuff. <clears throat> um, as always, this is a community meeting, so that means that your involvement is uh, recommended. And uh, if anybody has any questions, you want to go over anything, or you want to share your situation, feel free. Especially as it comes to some of the topics that we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to talk about documents. We're going to talk about um, the actual document um, within the e-folder. We're going to talk about document conversion. Old doc viewer, new doc viewer. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, listen in. We're going to talk about conditions, specifically standard conditions and enhanced conditions. Um, and you're going to hear me um, reiterate what I've been saying now for about 13 months, give or take. Um, but it doesn't make it any easier. Moving to enhanced conditions is, uh, is a project. It's a very, very big project. So I'm going to share some ideas. Um, I'm going to get some feedback. We're going to uh, do a little pop quiz, uh, see who knows what they're doing. Everybody last week really liked it. So, um, so there you go. That's what, the, uh, that's what the plan is for today. If anybody has any specific topics, questions they want to ask, things that you've run against, scenarios that you've run against, um, on this, let me know. All right, so first pop quiz we'll do um, documents. How many documents are too many uh, is the first one, or even better, how many documents do you have in your environment? Um, document for those that are unindoctrinated, document is uh, to a filing cabinet, um, or document is to the e folder as a Manila hanging folder is to a filing cabinet. So, uh, you know, it's not uncommon. For companies to have hundreds um, because you need something for all these PDFs, right? And so then naming conventions come in. Uh, so Lisa says never too many. So Lisa, I'm going to pick on you. How do you separate out all of your documents from a naming convention? Do you use the age old method of doing like appraisal dash hyphen dash, or do you use property dash appraisal, or do you use borrower docs, whatever? Do you use, like, how, how are you guys using this? Um, I've seen all different kinds of iterations over the years. And um, the problem of too many documents is a lot of maintenance, right? Especially if you've got multiple channels. So Luba's got 500, which is totally fine. What I'm, I'm more interested in, and Kelly's got 241. Okay. It's still 241, right? Um, <laughs> Lisa's got 500 with the same name. Um, <clears throat> so for everybody who's got like hundreds, right? How do your bar borrowers listen to me? How do your team members find the document they're looking for? Do you have a search tool? Because natively there is no search tool um, in desktop. And uh, and so how do they find them? Who's using document sets? I'm asking a lot of questions at once, so you're probably, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you're probably having a hard time keeping up. But I hope that you're getting the idea here that um, it is different for everybody, right? And, uh, and Candace brings up a good point, almost 550, and that's before wholesale adds theirs. So 
um, it's really, really important to remember that your internal team members, if you're just doing retail, your internal team members need to find these things. But as Candace points out, with non-retail, whether you're dealing with correspondent or you're dealing with wholesale, if they're going into your TPO Connect portal, um, or if you've got a third-party portal, you've got to list out in some intuitive way for them to find what you want them to upload to. So Robert's concept here is for internal teams, add everything into a doc set based upon a loan template set. That's a little touchy, um, and, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, Robert, real quick, did you mean loan template set or did you mean document set as a set? I'm curious if you add, Robert, if you add your document sets to your loan template sets, because that's something I see happen a lot. I'm gonna speak to that as well. Yes, you do, okay. Uh, Denise answered my question earlier where they use appraisal, colon, space, whatever. Appraisal, colon, space, whatever. Construction, colon, space, whatever. Um, totally great. And, and, I, and I, I advocate for something like that where you're able to segregate out all of your documents. Um, does everybody have the export tool? It's, a, it's an input form that's been around for many, many years. If you don't have it, send me a direct message i'll get it to you but it's an input form you can click a button it'll export all of your documents into an excel spreadsheet csv and you can um from there you can kind of see what you have in your e-folder if you don't have that let me know send me a message don't just put a chat in here but send me a direct message and i'll get you a copy of that input form on directly <clears throat> yes lisa send me a message robert so robert answered my question of he uses document sets, which is brilliant. Putting them into loan template sets, I have concerns. So Robert, in training or in third party land, do you have anybody applying a loan template set to the file after the loan is created? And that's where I see, so no, so beautiful answer. I love what how Robert answered. And let me explain for everybody else. If you notice in your files, after somebody's been working in it. If you notice replicated documents, it's not Encompass's fault. It's your workflow's fault. And the reason why you have multiple documents replicated is because you have users that are typically applying a loan template set because that's what somebody told them to do. But in your loan template set, you have document sets in there. You need to pull them out. That's my recommendation. That's when I go through workflow reviews, that's what I tell people is pull them out of loan template sets and have them applied through field triggers, usually when the file is sent to processing. Um, because hopefully you know you can apply a loan temp you can apply a loan template set via field trigger and you can make sure there's only one template in that loan template set applied via field trigger, which is your document set. So um, so Robert says he retrained folks to not reapply the template sets or duplicates. Absolutely. Um, great. And so the reason why this is important is because documents tie to um, a few other things. First of all, your document ties to one of three sources, right? You're needed, your custom print forms, or your standard print forms. And the more documents you have, the more maintenance you need to worry about. Pop quiz. What's the checkbox that you want to make sure you check? And what's the drop down that I always recommend you should choose? in every document. Many systems I go into, the one drop down is, is set to uh, one choice. Um, and then the other, is, the other checkbox is unchecked. And um, uh, closely, so very, very close, um, let me bring it up on screen here and we can talk about it. Um, Show an original format, right, Denise? Denise got that one. And the reason why you want to show an original format at the document level is because during conversion, that's what Encompass knows what to do. So what we're talking about here is, <clears throat> uh, can I drag this over? Can I drag this over? Um, see if I can get this figured out. I totally screwed that up, gang. Sorry. Let me try again. I swear um, it's my first day with my new brain. And so let me try this again. I'm just trying not to show like everything all at once kind of a thing. Um, uh, I'll come back to anti-steering for a second uh, and don't do settlement service. Good Lord, Larry. All right, standard form. All right, sharing, sharing screen now. Thanks for playing along. 
And so what we're talking about here is <clears throat> keep copy in original format and conversion format. So you see how this system is? I see this a lot. It literally takes five minutes. If you sort by conversion process to color, change it to, to yes, please, always um, keep an original format. The reason why this is important is A, you always want your conversion to be in color, always. Number one, it's how you spot fraud easier. Number two, it's how you can actually see things that are not going to be pixelated because when it converts to color, it makes coloring on the document much easier to see. Now, back in the day, the reason why this was an option was because Ellie May at the time wanted to try to conserve server space. That's it, that's the backstory. So what you should do is check this box, click at the color, and then click OK. The reason why this is important is because when it comes time for converted documents to be viewed in original format, if you don't have this, you won't be able to recompile if the document came in from here. That's what that does. So if you've ever gone into a document, into a file, and you click view in original format and nothing happens, it's because the, the file came into this document that was unchecked. Make sense, everybody? Hopefully you go through now and you put on your task list to make sure everything in here is color and everything in here is yes. Easy, cheesy, peasy, done. Um, yeah, yeah, Robert, definitely. Um, something down here that's also in documents. Queuing documents. This gets into new doc viewer, old doc viewer. How do you know if you have new doc viewer, pop quiz? Who can, who can tell me? How do, you do, how do you distinguish between if you have a new doc viewer? Candace is going to give me the right answer. I know she is. Um, <laughs> Imagey thing in e-folder. The, <laughs> the icons are different. You guys are killing me. Yes, the icons are different for new doc viewer, old doc viewer. Um, Kelly says if it comes up in Word, that's preview. And correct. So if you preview and your preview was Word, you have old doc viewer. Totally great point, Kelly. Um, so in the dot in the e-folder, when you go look at your converted documents, it'll have either a mountain with a sun, old doc viewer, or you'll have a page with a world in the lower right hand corner, new doc viewer. <clears throat> now you're gonna need new doc viewer, right? It's a, it's it's the end, it's the end game, right? You gotta get the new doc viewer. When you do, it's gonna be up to you. A couple of things here. If you listened to me about six years ago, you would have heard me talk about making sure you have this checked because if you have your teams uploading a file into a document and they're sitting there waiting for their Encompass to finish, that's because they're not uploading in the background. That's what that checkbox does. Now, if they are uploading in the background and they leave Encompass entirely, or if they lose their internet connection while it's being converted, if you go, when they go back into that file, they'll get a pop-up and says, hey, do you wish to convert this document? You guys ever get those messages? That's because you're on old doc viewer and you have this box checked for queuing. Um, so there's some downsides, like back in the day, when I say back in the day, like again, six, seven years ago, people would say they lost files. I know I had that in the e-folder, but now it's gone. It's because the queuing hadn't finished and they didn't check their queue before they left Encompass or if they got booted out of Encompass, they didn't go right back in to finish the conversion. So um, yeah, all this stuff's really important when it comes to documents. And the reason why you want new doc viewer is because all that garbage goes away. When you have new doc viewer, all the conversions on server side, which means there is no more waiting. You can literally convert like a thousand page file in, a, in I don't know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 maybe at most. It's, it's, a, it's a fraction of what you can do with desktop because you're dealing with server power, not desktop machine power. <clears throat> the other thing that's important too here is, um, is the, uh, the idea of this preview. Rob, I'll come back to your question one second. So when Kelly says, if it comes up in Word, you're hitting, your users are hitting preview on a custom print form and they're typing. Administratively, it's a big no-no. Administratively, you want to make sure they have a place to input that information on an input form, and then they hit preview on the custom print form, and then it has the words. You do not want them editing in Word, simply because you can't track what they did, and you want to make sure you can because that's your fiduciary responsibility to your company. 
Robert says, I hear that for um, some LOs, oh, about the about the conversion, but we've been on new doc viewer. Um, doc's not sticking to file manager. If that happens, Rob, they're probably either trying to upload um, files that have images um, hosted inside of images. So like where somebody takes a Word doc and they drop a PDF in a Word doc, that typically won't work. Or if they're dealing with password protected files um, or unzipped files, things like that won't work. So maybe it's like that. Uh, Candace says, does that setting affect current active loans with the old viewer? We went live with new viewer in April. Um, once the document's converted, it's converted. Candace, if I'm understanding your question, it won't reconvert. Um, hopefully I got that question answered for you, if that's what you're asking. I think that's what you're asking. But so those are the things on, on documents that I talk a lot about when it go into health checks. It's it's making sure that this is is done properly. Now, you can also come here, right? So you can drag this over. And while you're doing these other things, you can also make sure that they're properly visible to the correct external source. So just as a refresher, Web Center also means borrower connect. TPO also means TPO connect. EDM lenders means sending from the e-folder. In this particular case, <clears throat> this also includes now for, for TPO Connect, sorry, excuse me, um, Investor Connect, right? So can the PDF leave the e-folder for anybody besides borrowers or besides third-party originators? That's the context here. So um, just make sure you've got that identified um, properly. All right. Anybody have any more questions about this? Like, you know, going over stuff that you feel like you should have known or always knew whatever um you know while you're down here these are just some other global defaults then just make sure these are updated properly for whatever it is that you wanted to do so uh robert says uncheck queue of new doc viewer i i leave it honestly like i don't fix something that's not broken like if it's new doc viewers working for you rob i just leave it it's not gonna affect anything um Candace says we have files not yet closed using the old viewer what happens if we turn on that setting off and they upload docs. <clears throat> Do you mean this setting? I don't know what you mean. I would. That's why I'm saying like, I would leave that on. Like I wouldn't turn it off. Yeah, I leave it checked. My recommendation. Yeah, because you don't know what you're dealing with, right? When you go from, like, if it's working, less change is better. So if that's checked already, don't uncheck it. If it's not checked and you go to new doc viewer, I wouldn't check it because now your users are going to be completely confused. So anyway. Conditions. If, by the way, if you have any more questions about documents, pull me back, because um, now we're going to talk about conditions. 354 in this guy. Um, and I don't know if you can see the similarities here, but you know this one's got set up to where we've got um, uh, the ability for naming. Uh, oh, you go, Candace goes live with enhanced conditions next week. I definitely want to talk to you. I bet you the whole community is going to want to talk to you, Candace. Um, Kudos to you, good luck, and uh, may the force be with you. <clears throat> so what's interesting here on, con on conditions, and Candace, I would love to get your feedback on this. How much did your team appreciate that they no longer have to connect the dots between the name and the description to get a full sentence, right? Now they can have an internal description and an external description in enhanced conditions. Um, that's just one of the features, right? So in enhanced conditions, you've got internal and external. That's still up for debate, Candace says. Um, I came across somebody last week, two weeks ago, that have IDs. And they put the ID in the name of the standard condition. I'm like, guys, you can finally put the ID up here. Um, this is really helpful if you've got IDs on your uh, manual, right? Or if you're using IDs uh, for conditions from some other place. Um, Flagstar was the very first company I ever worked with that had IDs because they have thousands and thousands of conditions. So they had to uh, create an ID uh, matrix for their conditions to know what's going on. Um, something else that's really important, I've talked about a ton, is condition types. So Candace, sorry I'm calling on you a lot here, but you're going live next week. So how many other condition types did you create, Candace? Um, some of the ones that, that I advocate for are, uh, some type of condition type for something that's not listed here. So in English, 
maybe you have pre-underwriting, which is different from preliminary, but maybe to you it's the same. Um, post-closing, you've always had post-closing, but you've never been able to have your own categories, things like that. Uh, Lisa's got a closing. So Lisa created closing condition type. Um, another uh, uh, client I helped stand up, um, they, they use a enhanced condition type for um, processor to clear or underwriter to clear. All right, so Candace says Lynn was in charge of that project, so I haven't been involved too much. Well, we need to get we need to get info from Lynn. Like we need to hear from Lynn, Candace. Um, <clears throat> Candace continues. We're currently not using internal ID for retail that we want to. We also aren't using external descriptions. What is that the debate? Like, should the external description? All right, so here's so here's my um, here's my feedback for everybody. Remember, there's still no spell check in here. Okay. Um, if you have an external description, take the time and put it through spell check, maybe even Grammarly. This is what's going out to your borrowers or your third parties if you are producing any type of approval letter or commitment letter or loan status update letter, right? So take your time to at least spell check the external descriptions, please. Uh, something else that's really important here, we lap, you know, wraps back into is documents, right? That hasn't changed. So you need to make sure that, again, that all those Everybody who answered, and you have hundreds of documents, make sure that, you know, you, you, you're, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to ensure that your documents are mapped properly to your enhanced conditions. Um, Candace says they feel they don't need the external description because we don't print conditions. Okay, that's fine. Um, the other thing that's, that's different is when should the condition run? It's kind of weird for a lot of people. You're like, well, the condition should always be there. And you're like, well, what if there's an end date to the condition? Or what if there's a start date? Meaning I don't want the condition to show up until, you know, June 1st. Or I don't want this condition to be there after December 31st. Um, what's also important to understand that if we, if we do this in here, I'll just do this as a test real quick. <clears throat> We have the ability to activate or deactivate something again completely unusual for a condition so now when you go through you can now not have to show all 380,000 conditions you only have to show the ones that are active to your teams so it's really important to make sure that from a condition perspective um, again i understand moving to enhanced is is a, is a tough project candace how long have you been working on that as a team lynn i guess I'm guessing at least a few days. Um, typically, this kind of project can can last long. It can last months um, because you've got a lot of conversations to have since March. Okay, um, cool. Well, that's awesome that you actually got it done in like 60-ish days. Kudos to you. Like seriously, everybody wants to do it. Um, so that's awesome. Way faster than I expected. So I'm really interested to see how it turns out for you. <clears throat> the good news is if you can get people to understand that we have like other condition types, if you've got multi channels, right, you can have uh, and maybe Candace, that's what pushed your envelope is different conditions for different um, channels. Maybe that was helpful for you. Um, yeah, adding a new channel. So Candace says um, they're under pressure because they're adding a new channel soon. And that's what I would do. I would because, again, I don't want if I go in here. A different roles, right? And so I might have account managers, which are loan processors, but account managers for wholesale versus loan processors for retail. And I want to give them different experiences on what they're allowed to do. So those are, these are all use cases um, that you might find that are important for you to go through when you're trying to pitch. Another thing is these tracking statuses <clears throat> could be different for, for different folks. Uh, Sean adds here, the only issue I had with converting standard to enhanced conditions was that all of the standard condition descriptions ported to the enhanced internal descriptions, so I had to manually copy paste most of them to external. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Sean. Um, so what Sean's talking about is when you go into admin tools and you go to the bottom, there's uh, enhanced condition uh, tool, and it lets you convert, aka copy, all of your standard conditions, all of these guys overdo enhanced conditions. But as Sean said, you know, you can't take one and turn it into two. So they all go internal because it, because that's really been in your internal, right? Historically. 
what you put in the external is up to you. Candace and her team decided they didn't want anything in external. Um, and, and Sean adds, and I appreciate the feedback, Sean. So Sean adds, you know, at the end of the day, maybe it wasn't so bad because it does force you to review, which you have to do anyway. Like the expectation is once you port these things over, you're going to have to open this up. You're going to have to choose the condition type. You're going to have to decide what you want to show up here. So you can't just cap copy it over and be done with it. It is a, it is a project, and you do have to work through it. Um, so uh, something else that's nice in here from an auditing perspective, it does track last modified by and last modified date and time. And this again is a local machine time. Um, Candace adds, Lynn's hope was that we could sync over the condition sets versus recreating them. Yeah, now, again, expectation is if you're dealing with enhanced condition sets, it's looking for the object of enhanced conditions. Um, great news though, Candace, you don't have to do it ever again. It's one and done. And it wasn't as bad as converting to URLA 2020, right? I mean, nothing was bad as that, maybe except TRID. <clears throat> In the event, um, any questions on, so, so we've heard from a couple of folks who have done it. I can tell you that on the, on the conditions part, some of the biggest um, uh, challenges that come up again is exporting these conditions. Just like I said, under the documents, I've got a way for you to export all your conditions into a CSV. So if you need my help with that, let me know, send me a direct message, like I said, on the documents and I'll get you the, uh, the input form with the button click and you can just export all your uh, standard conditions. Enhanced conditions, um, different object. Um, we haven't created that yet because um, we just haven't had the need. So um, the reason why all this is important is because when you get into enhanced conditions, God willing, and I don't know, Candace, if you're planning on this yet, but remember, when you get into process automation workflow rules, all of a sudden now you have the beauty of Encompass Web to have the result of your triggering event and your conditions to apply enhanced conditions. And you can either apply the selected conditions individually. So if you have something very laser focused, you can do that or you can apply the uh, automated conditions. And that automated conditions um, that you see here is in the automated conditions business rule. So if you go down to business rules and you go to automated enhanced conditions, it's right here. That's money. And so now as you're dealing with EPC and you're bringing in data into the file autonomously <clears throat> and you want your system to automatically when the property's in a flood zone or the property's in a FEMA disaster zone, God forbid, you can fire automated conditions into your loan file that are prior to approval or prior to uh, clear to close, you know, prior to closing or prior to docs. And now the loan gets hard stopped. All lights out. Nobody had to do it. It was just happened. And so Chris says, I inherited our conditions already and have been moved to enhance a long time ago. Oh, um, so I got lucky. Yeah, nice job, Chris. Way to brag. You're always bragging, Chris. I don't, I don't get it, man. <laughs> Lynn has done some automation. Awesome. And Candace said, yeah, that's what we're at. That's, uh, that's what they're excited about is the automated conditions. <clears throat> I'm telling you right now as an, as an admin um, that's deeply involved in hearing about how Encompass doesn't give the business what it needs or could it be better or, you know, whatever, or all these other LOS platforms are so much better, blah, blah, blah. You just have to really dig in. I'm, I'm, I've worked on other platforms and uh, that's why I'm doing this uh, throughout you know month of May and the month of June is to make sure you know about this stuff and you've got some perspective. So please talk about it as a community. Please share your insights, Candice, with Lynn on what's working, what's not working, that kind of a thing. Um, Chris says, I'm working on automated flood through EPC now. Yeah, and Bob's done it. Like Bob did a post, uh, Bob Loudon did a post on uh, the four EPCs they did. Thank you. Thank you for posting that out there, Bob. Uh, Candace says, what testers are most annoyed about is the lack of the little yet. I totally agree, Candace. And I would, um, I think you said you put a case in there, but I'm hoping that in 24.2, that's, that's done. So yeah, we'll see. Luba, go do your thing. Everybody else, it's 30 minutes. You know my deal. Thanks for coming today. Come every Tuesday at 4 p.m. And uh, Chris, great job. He's got his auto, He's got his. Uh, he's got his automation working already. So there you go. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks as always.
I'll see you next week and uh, stay involved in the community. Ask questions and we'll get you answers. Thanks everybody. Take care.